Sorry, officer. Hello, Mr. Morland. All you needed was wings and you'd have left the ground. Hello, Lieutenant. What's important enough to get you out here at this hour? An old friend of yours, Mr. Bailey. Fred? What's he up to this time? He stuck up a bank in Ventura, killing the teller. We figure he's in the neighborhood. So he's at it again, huh? Yes, thanks to you. What do you mean? If you hadn't gotten him off after he killed Sergeant Mason, he'd be where he belongs now, under six feet of dirt. The jury didn't think so. Besides, I was just doing my job. Bailey was my client. Well, if you're lucky, you might run into him and pick up some more business. Thanks for the tip, Lieutenant. I'll keep my eye open, just in case. You know that Wallen's a pretty smart operator. Someday he'll be too smart. Hold it. Hello, Bailey. You can put that away. Hop in. I hear you had a little accident in Ventura. Word sure gets around. Yes, doesn't it? I also understand that someone was killed. That's too bad. Murder's a nasty charge. Not for a smart mouthpiece like you. Even for a smart mouthpiece like me. Murder, my friend, is like a game of solitaire. To be sure of winning, it should be played alone. You were careless. You played in front of witnesses. Witnesses can be squared if you got the scratch. I've got it. How much? Enough. Even for you. You know, I have an idea. Maybe we can work something out after all. We know he was in this area. We had a roadblock on every exit. Bailey couldn't have got out. But he did. Well, I don't know how he did it. We covered every inch of that territory until even the worms started to complain. Maybe he flew out in a helicopter. Well, one thing's sure. He didn't walk out or drive out. Sergeant Gorman, homicide. Okay, let's have it. Right, got it. Mamma mia! Better stop by McMullen's. He might be interested. Might be? One will get your tennies out there before me. Go on, beat it. Ball one! Strike one! What? You heard me. I called it a strike. Says you. Says me. Yeah, you heard her. You want to make something out of it? OK, crooks. If I wasn't off duty, I'd put you all in a clink. Strike two. Tell me, Mrs. McMullen, when was the last time you had your eyes examined? You ought to know. You paid the bill. Let's see you take a swing. He can't. He's as rusty as an old gate. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just put this one where I can reach it. Want to get in the game? I wish I could, but I got a little job. There's a stiff in a wrecked car up on Mulholland. Why bother me? This is my day off. Well, I thought maybe you might want to come along. According to the license plate, it's John Morland's car. Morland, huh? Well, what do you know? Here, Jerry, take care of this. I'm sorry, honey, but I'll have to. Here's your hat and coat, Daddy. Oh, thank you, baby. Thank you. How about that window? Oh, here. See if you can square with the O'Briens. I'll take care of you crooks later. Where is it? Down there at the bottom of the hill. 
Coroner's deputy's waiting for you. He got here a few minutes ago with a newspaper man. Okay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Doc, Larry. How does it look? Pretty messy. His own mother wouldn't know him. Well, I hope his wife does. Somebody will have to identify him. He sure don't look pretty. Looked a whole lot better the last time I saw him a few nights ago. Where was that? Well, we had a roadblock out for Red Bailey. I could have told him then what happens to guys who try to tear up the road. See, it caught fire, too. Funny nobody noticed it. Well, we get a lot of fog up here. It must have happened last night. Easy to see what happened, all right. He must have taken the curve at 80 and went right over the edge. It's the last thing he ever knew. Maybe so. Only he wasn't doing 80. Huh? This car's in low gear. It's pretty hard to do 80 in first. What does that mean? I wouldn't call it an accident until I saw the autopsy. Say, that sounds like a story. Can I break it now? Better wait until I break it to Mrs. Morland. Is Mrs. Morland home? Uh, no, sir, she's out. Would you care to leave your name? We'll wait. Lieutenant McMullen, police department. Oh. Oh, come in. It's okay, sister. Nothing to worry about. Would you like to wait in the living room? If it's comfortable. Well, it looks comfortable. Nice place for a party. Stick around. When will Mrs. Morland be back? I don't know. They didn't say. They? Who is she with? A uh, Mr. Conroy. Well, our ambitious young district attorney, no less. What about uh, Mr. Morland? Oh, he's in San Francisco. When did he leave? Uh, the day before yesterday. If I can't get tickets for Thursday night, how about Friday? Friday night might be better. By that time, I should certainly know much more about what... Hello, Jerry. What brings you here? Hello, Mr. Conroy. I came to see Mrs. Morland. Kath, this is Lieutenant McMullen. And Sergeant... Carries the name. How do you do? How do you do? Why don't you sit down, please? Thank you. What's this all about, Jerry? I don't suppose it's just a social call. I'm afraid not. Mrs. Morland, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yes? I understand your husband went to San Francisco. Have you heard from him since he left? Why, no. How did he travel by car? Yes. Alone? What are you driving at, Jerry? There's a wrecked car up on Mulholland Drive, registered in the name of John Morland, with a dead man inside. No. Do you recognize this ring? Why, yes, it's... Hello? Yeah, he is. Coroner's office for you. Hiya, Doc. You did, huh? Okay, Doc, thanks. What did he find? 25 caliber bullet in the heart. You mean he was shot? Yes. Could he have done it himself? Not unless he was a contortionist. I call it murder. Morland and O'Neill, good morning. Oh, hello, Sue. Yes, isn't it? It's terrible. I'm all broken up about it. Well, I, I always say... Uh, excuse me a sec. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. O'Neill. Uh, who shall I say? You might say Lieutenant McMullen, Police Department. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Yes? Lieutenant McMullen of the Police Department to see you. I sent him in. Hello, Mr. O'Neill. How are you, Lieutenant? Have a chair. Too bad about your partner. Yes, horrible. Do you have any idea who... Do you? Well, no. Who'd want to kill him? You, among others. Well, I have an alibi. So have I. I was home in bed. It's a good place to be. Too bad Morland didn't have the same idea. This trip of his to San Francisco, what was that about? I don't know. I didn't know he was going to San Francisco or that he had any business up there. Did he generally do that? Just go off without telling you? Never. I couldn't understand it, especially under the circumstances. You see, John had been working very hard on a case. And when he left the office that evening... Good night, Jim. Going home now. Well, you better get a good rest. You've got a tough day in court tomorrow. Oh, I know it. 
Have my homework right here. Well, don't overdo it. You haven't been looking so well lately. Oh, I'll probably live unless Catherine kills me with her cooking. See you tomorrow. Good night. That was the last I ever saw of him. Next day, when he didn't show up in court, I naturally thought something must be wrong. So I called his home. And? Well, when Catherine told me that he'd gone to San Francisco, it sort of bowled me over. I couldn't believe it. So what did you do then? What could I do? I tried calling San Francisco, but I couldn't locate him anywhere. So I finally gave up until you fellows found him. I'd like to look through his personal files. I have it right here. The minute I learned of Morland's death, I had his secretary get them together. Looks like I have a bit of reading to do. You mind if I take this with me? Not at all. How did Morland and his wife get along? Oh, fairly well, considering their differences. Such as? And John lived in his work, while Catherine is young and interested in having a good time. She probably felt a bit neglected. They ever quarrel about it? Oh, you know how it is. You're a married man yourself. It happens sometimes in the best of families. Even murder? He was pretty well fixed financially, wasn't he? Yes, we've done rather well. And John had some interests of his own on the side. What sort of interests? Oh, speculations. Things he handled on his own. Carry much insurance? Uh, quite a bit. Thanks very much, Mr. O'Neill. Not at all. Tell me, with all that dough, how come they didn't have a cook? What do you mean? That crack he made about his wife's cooking. <laughs> oh, that. Well, that was just a gag. What with the shortage, half the time, Catherine had to do her own cooking, and poor John bore the brunt of it. I remember the last time they had us over for dinner. The cook had walked out, and Catherine had to prepare the meal. Kath, you've done yourself proud. That's the best dinner I've had in years. You're a blue ribbon cook if ever I saw one. She should be. She's practiced enough on me. <laughs> well, it hasn't hurt you too much. You seem to have survived. Or shall we give you all the credit, Doctor? <laughs> oh, my dear, you may have the credit, just so long as he keeps paying my bills. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, John? No, I'm sorry. If you'll excuse me. Well, let me help you. No, please, I'll be all right in a minute. Oh, I'm sure you will, John. Come on, lie down. If you'll excuse me a moment, please. What was it? Indigestion, I suppose. Doc Pearson would know more about it. I guess he would. Thanks a lot. Good morning, Lieutenant. What can I do for you? Feeling all right? Physically, never better. Oh, too bad. And I thought you were here on business. I am. Police business. You were John Mullins, doctor? Family physician for more than 20 years. How was his health? I'm glad you came to see me, Lieutenant. If you hadn't, I was going to come to see you. About his health? What about it? Well, outside of a neurotic tendency, due to overwork, his health was good. That is, up until a few weeks ago. Then the last time I was at his house for dinner, he had a sudden attack of what seemed like gastritis. It was so severe, I had to pump his stomach, put him to bed. Then the next day, when I called on him, Anyway, you're still alive. But for how much longer? What is wrong with him, Doctor? Oh, just a little nervous indigestion as usual. My dear, will you get that pill? Of course. I'll go right now. What's the matter? You know, I had the contents of your stomach analyzed. Well? I couldn't believe the report, so I had it double checked. Poison. Are you sure? Positive. But how could it? it? Must have been an accident. Accident? Some of the bug killer Catherine's been using in the kitchen. Funny it should find its way accidentally into your food, and not ours. There were six of us last night. I don't know how, but it did. And you're willing to let it go at that? Why not? It's your life. <laughs> the trouble with you, Tom, is you've been reading too many detective stories. 
Well, if anybody wanted to kill me, there are a lot better ways. Take it from an old crime specialist who knows. Well, some bug powder was spilled into my food and gave me a stomachache. Now, you fix my stomachache and we'll forget about it. Okay, John. If that's the way you want it. And that's all there was to it? No. Because, much to my surprise, he walked into my office later that same afternoon with a bottle of medicine that I had prescribed for him. He told me that when Catherine had come back with the medicine, he had a feeling that there was something wrong. It took quite a while. The druggist was busy with all the prescriptions, so I had to wait. Would you get me a glass of water, dear? Oh, really, it's not that bad. The doctor said it would be quite bitter. All right. There you are. Thank you. Just a minute. Let me look at that bottle. Just as I thought. Three times a day after each meal. I better wait till after lunch. I doubt if it makes any difference. You're just trying to put off taking it. Maybe so. I'll stop fixing your lunch. Were you beginning to think I was trying to starve you to death? I wasn't afraid of that. Now, don't forget your medicine. Toby leads such a hard life. He's been sleepy all day. I don't think he's asleep. He's dead. There's enough poison in that medicine to kill 20 men. Well, could the druggist have made a mistake? I checked with him immediately. He assured me it would be impossible to make that kind of an error. Was this the same type of poison that you found in Moreland's food? Yes. Well, why didn't you report it to the police? I was going to. But John still refused to admit that it couldn't have been an accident. He made me promise to say nothing for the time being. Well, you better keep that promise a while longer. In the meantime, I'll take this with me. Ready to order yet, miss? No, I'm waiting for a gentleman. You didn't happen to see him come in. What does he look like? Oh, sort of medium-sized, but handsome, in a way. Hiya, baby. Oh. Am I late? Oh, no, I was early. I finished the dishes sooner than usual, so Mrs. Morland let me leave. Had a girl? Well, you have. Oh, Anything you say. You got any beer? No beer. Well, what have you got to drink? Only tea. Okay, tea. A pot? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Something to eat? Yeah, bring us the works. You know, you, you look kind of cute. I hardly recognize you without your uniform. <laughs> it uh, sure hides a lot. You know, Io credo che tu può fare un buon piatto di pasta purpetta. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, hiya, Jerry. Hiya, Tom. Dorothy, I'm glad you're able to make it. You didn't tell her you were meeting us. Oh, no. Good. Dorothy, uh, we want you to tell us everything you can about the Morlands. That would fill a library. How about a fast digest? Well, they didn't get along too hot. Why? Well, for one thing, he was jealous. Of who? Mr. Conroy. Had he reason to be? Mm, maybe. Were you there when he left for San Francisco? Mm-hmm. Did you hear him say he was going to San Francisco? No, sir. Mrs. Morland told me after he left. They ever quarrel? They did. I didn't hear it. Uh, you don't hear much, do you? Only what I'm interested in. Well, what are you interested in? You'd be surprised. What did Mrs. Morland do the night he left? Stayed home. Alone? Well, I was there. And that's all? No visitors? No visitors. What about the next day? You mean... 
The day he was killed? Yeah, yeah, we know you read the newspapers, but what did she do that day? Stayed home. And that night? I wouldn't know. I was out. Where? Sing a picture. Alone? For a change. If he wasn't headed for San Francisco, where would he go? He ever walk out like that before? Well, about a year ago, they had a quarrel. He disappeared for a few days without letting her know where he was going. Later on, we found out he went up to their weekend lodge. Lodge? What lodge? They have a place up in the hills. Where? Topanga Canyon Road. It's the last house on the right, just before you reach the summit. Thanks, Dorothy. You've been a great help. You get the check. But, Tom, aren't you so gonna... So long, baby. But what about the palladium? I'm sorry, baby doll. It'll have to be some other time. Nice job, Sue. That must be it up ahead. Say, wasn't that a light in the window? Just for a second? Probably the reflection of the headlights. Think it might be Moreland's ghost? Well, if it is, I'd like to talk to him. Mr. Conroy, how are you? You can put that away, Tom. I don't think we'll need it. You surprised me, Lieutenant. I wasn't expecting you. We weren't expecting you. No, I don't see how you could, since I told no one I was coming here. Would you mind telling me what you are doing here? Are you questioning me or asking me? Just asking. I'm here for the same reason you are. Although you haven't kept me advised as to your investigation, I'm still district attorney of this county. So I thought I'd do a little investigating on my own. In the dark? I tried the lights, but they wouldn't work. The main switch was pulled, so I threw it back on. If you don't mind, Mr. Conroy, exactly what were you looking for? I really don't know. I just got to thinking about the 24-hour lapse between the time Marlin left home and the time of his death. It occurred to me that he might have come here. If he had, I might find something to throw more light on what happened. And did you? No. Mind if we look? Go right ahead. I've had enough for one night. You pack a mean wallop, Lieutenant. You're no pushover yourself. If you find anything, let me know. Don't forget, Jerry, I'm still district attorney. Homicide Bureau. Hello, Lee. This is Jerry. I'm at Topanga, 5309. Will you check on this and see if any calls have been made from this phone since the 18th? Yes, I'll be here. This place looks like it's been closed for months. Nothing here but the furniture. Even if there was, the DA beat us to it. I don't see what we're wasting our time for anyway. We got a perfect case against them all, and damn, what more do you want, a confession? It would help. Well, maybe if we talk to her, she might get around to admitting it. You might try asking Conroy, too, while you're at it. Hello? That's right. There was. Wait a second, I marked this down. Okay, shoot. Whose name is that number listed in? Uh-huh. And the address? Okay, thanks. What do you got? So this place has been closed for months, huh? There was a call made from here on the 18th. Hey, that's the day Morland. Who was the call to? Gloria Vale. Does that name mean anything to you? No, not a thing. 
But she sure sounds interesting. Okay, Romeo. We'll soon find out. Well, looks like she's not home. Your powers of deduction simply amaze me. Well, where do we go from here? No place. We'll stick around. I like it here. Okay. What's the matter? What happened? You're keeping me awake. Uh, was I snoring? Well, you wasn't crooning. We'll try again some other time. Meanwhile, if you hear anything, let me know. Sure, I will. Good night, dear. Good night. See who that was? That was Morland's partner, O'Neill. Could that have been Gloria Vale with him? Could be. Let's find out. Who is it? Police. We'd like to speak to you, Miss Vale. Marion Gordon. Well, it's a small world. When did you change your name? There's no law against it. No? What do you hear from Red Bailey? He's not here. Mind if we look around? It looks like a nice place. Got an extra room you want to rent? What have you been doing with yourself? Keep him busy? I'll let you read about it in the columns. No, I never read the society page. You know where Red is? How should I know? I broke up with that hoodlum long ago. Is that why you go out with his lawyer? Or is that strictly social? Mr. O'Neill happens to handle my legal affairs. We had dinner tonight to discuss a certain problem. A problem named Red Bailey? Certainly not. Or a phone call you got on the 18th? Phone call? Yeah, you know, telephone. You talk through here and it comes out there. Who did you talk to? What do you mean? Look, let's get this straight. I ask the questions, you give the answers. Now, how about that phone call? Very well. He called me. You understand, I had nothing to do with that Ventura bank job. I never mixed in with his business. But the next evening, he called me. Around 10 or 11. I had gone to bed early. I was asleep when the telephone rang. Hello? Red! Honey, where are you? I've been wearing myself sick. Shut up and listen. I'm okay. I'm stashed, but good. I'm staying at Marlin's place in Topanga. Are you kidding? What are you doing there? You'd be surprised. I got an angle. Everything is gonna be okay. I'm blowing this joint tonight. Hello? Hello? And that was all. I thought we'd been cut off. I waited for him to call me back. When he didn't, I tried to call him. There was no answer. I haven't heard a word from him since. And where does O'Neill come in? Well, when I didn't hear from Red, and then I saw in the paper about Moreland being killed, I... You figured naturally Red had something to do with it. Red never killed anybody. Not even a cop called Mason, according to the late Mr. Moreland. He didn't. He tried to go straight. But he couldn't hold a job. His leg hurt him so much. What was wrong with his leg? He broke it in three places. Where did that happen? San Quentin. Poor Red. No wonder he has to go around robbing banks and killing people. I tell you, he... Save it. Come on, Tom. Good night, Marion. Thanks for a lovely evening. Yes, poor Mr. O'Neill is so broken up. It's hard to believe that he and Mr. Moreland never got along. 
Not that Mr. Moreland was so easy to get along with. But never speak ill of the dead, say I. Hold on a sec, I got company. Hello, Lieutenant. What can I do for you today? Mr. O'Neill in? Yes, sir, but he's tied up with a very important visitor. Can you wait? Sure, we got plenty of time. Are you accusing me of my partner's murder? I was merely pointing out that you had good motive. I happen to know you owed him $40,000 you couldn't pay back. Why would I have had to kill him for that? He'd have been willing to wait. That's not the way I heard it. He was going to break up the partnership, leaving you out in the cold. You know, there's a corny old proverb about people who live in glass houses. Think it over before you start heaping bricks. Okay, I will. Well, how about tomorrow night? Well, I'll be busy then. Oh, Mr. Conroy. You're not following me by any chance. You just get there ahead of me. Find anything last night? A couple of things I'm looking into. How are you making out? Anytime you're ready to swap notes, let me know. I'll remember that. Maybe we can work out a deal. Oh, how are you, Lieutenant? Sit down. I'll be right with you. Have a good time last night? Why? She's a lovely girl, isn't she? The nice, quiet, home type. I don't know who you're talking about. Marion Gordon. Oh. I took her to dinner. She's a client of mine. So she tells me. Red Belly's a client of yours, too. So? You wouldn't happen to know what he was doing at Morland's Lodge the night Morland was killed. I have no more idea than you have. I have a couple of ideas. One of them might interest you. The day Morland left, he had quite a chunk of cash that he had drawn from the bank that afternoon. Enough to tempt Bailey and maybe someone else. You're barking up the wrong tree, Lieutenant. Am I? Perhaps this will convince you. After leaving for the Bar Association meeting tonight, I remembered I had left behind the report I was scheduled to read. So I went back to the house. Catherine had told me she was going to be alone. I was surprised he when I heard voices in the living room. And as long as he refuses, we'll just have to persuade him. But you know that I've tried over and over again. He won't listen. His mind is made up and nothing will change it. He'll never give me a divorce, as long as he lives. As long as he lives. Yes, I thought of that, too. Kath, you're mad. I won't let you think of it. Nobody can stop me from thinking. Not even you, Dick. Mullen's diary. That's right. Why didn't you give me this before? I just found it this morning. If you find anything else, I'd appreciate it if you let me know. Ah, oh, come on. How about a date? Well... You know something? What? Io credo che tu può fare un buon piatto di pasta purpetta. Yeah? Uh-huh. How about Thursday night? Okay, it's a date. Come on, passion flower, before you wear yourself out. What is this lingo you give these gals? I don't know, but it sure gets results. You know, Chief, that's what makes women so interesting. You can never figure them out. Who'd ever think Mrs. Morland would try to bump off her husband? She seems so quiet and refined. Well, this is a refined murder. Yes? Mrs. Morland is here to see you, sir. Send her in. Hello, Mrs. Morland. It was good of you to come. Not at all. You sit down, please. Thank you. There's a few things I'd like to clear up. I understand... Uh, cigarette? Thank you. You were rather active in the Women's League. In fact, you were nominated for the office of vice president. But unfortunately, you were not there the night they held the elections, were you? You mean the night my husband was killed? No. I wasn't feeling well, so I stayed home. You were alone? Yes. Did anyone call? 
No. Tell me, Mrs. Morland, how did you and your husband get along? Fairly well. Of course, we had our occasional differences, but nothing to speak of. What were they about? Unimportant matters, the usual thing. Like what? Jealousy? Neither one of us was jealous. We had no reason to be. Sounds like a pretty happy household. It was. Did you know your husband kept a diary? You might be interested to see what he wrote. But this isn't true. Isn't it? No, it's absolutely fantastic. That's not the way it happened at all. How did it happen? Well, John did go out, as he says. About ten minutes later, the, the doorbell rang. And the maid answered it. It was Dick. Oh, hello, Dick. Nice of you to drop in. Hi, Cap. Where's John? He left about 15 minutes ago. Left? Isn't he coming back? I don't know. He didn't say. Why? That's strange. He asked me to stop by at 8. Said he had something very important to discuss with me. Well, maybe he intends coming back and forgot to mention it. But he made such a point of my... <laughs> What's so funny? I see you still don't know how to tie a proper knot. <laughs> don't let me interrupt. I'm just the husband. Interrupt what? What's been going on behind my back all these years? John, you're not serious. Why don't you tell me that you were only straightening his tie? That's the usual alibi, isn't it? What are you getting at? You think you're pretty clever, don't you? The rising young man, shining light of the bar, good-looking, ambitious. I'm only in your way. But you haven't pushed me aside yet. In court or in my house, get out. You're wrong about a lot of things. I told you to get out. Please go, Dick. But, Kath, I... Please. You're wrong, John. Very wrong. Dick is a good friend to us both. Don't you remember that we promised if there were ever somebody else that would tell each other? I haven't forgotten that promise. Please believe in me, John. I must have been out of my mind. Kath, I, I was all mixed up. I don't know. Can you forgive me? Of course, dear. You've just been working too hard. I'll try to find Dick tomorrow and patch things up. Kath, I'll make it up to you. I promise I will. From that moment on, he was sweeter to me than he'd ever been. No more jealousies, accusations, or suspicions. Like a second honeymoon. It was wonderful. It must have been. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mullen. Is that all? Is there more? Good day. Good day. Well, what are you waiting for? I wonder. Get San Quentin. Tell them I want any x-rays they got of Bailey's leg. Bailey's leg? What's the gag? I want to see what it looked like after it healed. Why? Before I arrest anybody for the murder of John Morland, I want to be sure it was Morland who was murdered, not Red Bailey. I don't get it. Look, either Mrs. Morland just lied, or Morland lied in this diary. If he lied, why did he? I'll bite why. I don't know yet. I don't know that he lied. But if he did, and was insanely jealous enough to want to kill his wife, he might try to frame her for his own murder, substituting somebody else's body to take his place. Bailey? Could be. That's what I want to find out. You can see the irregularity of the tibia and fibula where the fractures occurred. Bailey's leg is healed, but those marks and callus formations remain forever. Here's the picture you wanted of Moreland's leg. Hey. If it is Moreland's leg, well, we'll soon find out. They don't match. Mm-hmm. That settles it. 
Hello? No, oh, yes, he is. It's for you, Lieutenant. Hello? Yes, Lee. They did? What caliber? Fine. I'll be right over. This is all there was in the bedroom. Anything else? No, that's everything. Thanks, Dick. Uh, Hiya, Sugar. Remember me? Whom did you wish to see, please? Mrs. Morland. She's in the living room. Morning, Miss Morland. Mr. Conroy, going somewhere? As a matter of fact, we were just leaving. Going far? I'm driving Mrs. Morland up to Arrowhead. She's been through quite a lot. I thought it'd be better if she got away for a little while. Well, I hate to interfere with your plans. But have you ever seen this before? Yes, that's my gun. Where did you get it? A fire warden just found it. About a hundred yards from where your husband's car went off the road. I just missed it a few days ago. I wondered what had happened to it. And you no idea how it got to the scene of your husband's death? Of course not. What about it? Just that the bullet that killed him was fired from your gun. I'm sorry, Mrs. Morlin, but I'll have to ask you to come with me. Does this mean you're placing her under arrest? I'm afraid it does. That won't be necessary. I'll vouch for Mrs. Morland's appearance when she's needed. Mr. Conroy, I feel that you're prejudiced in this case. Do you really believe you have enough evidence to get an indictment? I think I have. Please, Dick, I don't want you to become involved. All right, Lieutenant. Two sensational developments arose in the Morland murder case when police arrested Mrs. Catherine Morland, charging her with the slaying of her husband, followed promptly by the resignation from office of District Attorney Conroy, close friend of the accused, as well as of the late John Morland. An explanation was not forthcoming, but an early statement is promised. Turning from crime to politics, in the municipal... So McMullen finally arrested her. She hasn't been indicted yet. No, but she soon will be. Well... I'd better get back to the office before too many people begin to wonder where I am. Will you call me later? You know I will. Hello? Red? What happened to you? Where have you been? Never mind that. I want to see you. I got a little package I want you to keep for a few days. How's the weather up there? Clear. Good. See you tonight. Your place, 8 o'clock. OK, Red. See you at 8. Bye. some breath. What's the matter with you? Something wrong? No. Everything's all right. You look sick. What gives? Nothing. Nothing at all. What are you scared about? I'm not scared. It's just that. Good evening, Mr. O'Neill. OK, Red, drop it. I hate to spoil the fun, but if anybody does any shooting around here, it'll be us. It's your coat, Marion. We'll all take a nice little ride. We don't seem to be getting anywhere, Marion. Let's start all over again, from the beginning. I've already told you I don't know a thing. It was all Jim's, Mr. O'Neill's idea. Killing Bailey or Morlin? Or both? I don't know. I don't know anything. If Jim killed him, I had nothing to do with it. Did Bailey? I've told you I don't know. Honest, I don't. Jim's been awfully nice to me, and he was afraid if Bailey found out, he'd be jealous. What about Morlin? All I know is Jim had a fight with him over money. What money? I don't know. I wasn't there. 
Where? Wherever it happened. Jim didn't tell me much about it. When was this? Just before Mr. Moreland was killed. Exactly what did O'Neill tell you? I don't remember exactly. All right, Marion, we'll give you a chance to refresh your memory. Send in O'Neill. Take her outside. It'll be a pleasure. This way, Miss Gordon. Have a chair, Mr. O'Neill. Thank you. Would you mind telling me what you were doing at Marion Gordon's apartment tonight? Miss Gordon and I are friends. Is that why you were about to take a pot shot at her? Uh, not at her, at Bailey. You see, I happened to drop in on Miss Gordon tonight to discuss some business. I left the room for a moment, and while I was out, Bailey showed up. He started to threaten Miss Gordon. I knew that the only language that he would understand would be a gun. Fortunately, you arrived just in time to make any action on my part unnecessary. Do you always carry a gun on your uh, social calls? It makes me feel that much safer at night. There have been so many hold-ups. You're right. It's always best to play safe, isn't it? What does Red Bailey have on you anyway? It's not just Marion Gordon, is it? Or doesn't Bailey know you've been two-timing him? I don't know what you're talking about. You tried to knock over Bailey before he could knock you off. Why? Was it over Marion Gordon or Moreland? Moreland had nothing to do with it. No? Marion tells me that you and Moreland had a quarrel over money. You took from the firm. You don't think I killed him, do you? Didn't you? Of course not. Not to change the subject, you recall the telephone conversation Miss Gordon had with Bailey this afternoon? I thought phone tapping was illegal. It is. But there's no law against dictaphones. We've had Marion Gordon covered since the night we discovered who she was. All right. Bailey called and said he was coming to see her. I knew he was wanted for murder, so I told her I'd be there. Why didn't you call me? Didn't you think I'd be interested? I was going to, after I got Bailey out of Miss Gordon's apartment. I didn't want her exposed to that kind of publicity. I see. That's a pretty good story, Mr. O'Neill. But I think you skipped some of the most interesting details. What are you driving at? You needed money to cover your embezzlement. You knew Red Bailey wanted Marion to keep a package for him. And you figured that package was the money he had stolen from the Ventura Bank. You were going to kill him, hide the money, and then call the police. That's also a pretty good story, Lieutenant. But I don't think you can prove it. I think you're right. Good night. Send in Red Bailey. Just a moment. You forgot your matches. Come in. Sit down. It's a tough rap, Bailey. I don't think you can beat it. Why did you kill him? You know we'll hang you anyway on that Ventura job. So what do you got to lose? Why did you kill Marlin? I didn't. No? No. What did you do? How much do you know? You were at Marlin's Lodge. He brought me there. Why? To hide out for a couple of days until he got things fixed. And the next day, he called and said everything was okay, that he was coming to pick me up. And I phoned Marion to tell her. In the middle of the conversation, I heard a car pull up.
get yourself shot. What was Willis doing here? Was that the guy who just left? Yes. He was the caretaker. I saw his car out front, so I drove on down the road and walked back. Did he see you? I'm smarter than that. He wouldn't have left here if he had. Who are you calling? My girl. This joint's getting too hot. That guy Willis is liable to walk in while I'm sleeping. You won't have to worry about that. What's the idea? Sorry, Red. This is the way it has to be. I don't get it. Why? I just happened to find it necessary. And that's the way I left him, so help me. On his living room floor. I never saw him again. And you didn't put him in his car with a bullet in him for good measure? And run him off the cliff so that it looked like an accident? I tell you, I didn't. Try telling it to the grand jury. Find him a nice, quiet cell. I don't want him to be disturbed. Is Marion Gordon still out there? Yes, sir. But Mr. Conroy's here and wants to see you right away. Well, send him in. And I want Mrs. Morland, too. Yes, sir. Hello, Jerry. Oh, Mr. Conroy, anything I can do for you? Habeas corpus, huh? Well, I could have saved you the trouble. I was just about to release her. You mean you have the murderer? Maybe. Who? Well, we'll read about it in the newspapers. And you might forget you gave me this. Thanks, Jerry. Come in. Kath, it's all right. I'm here to take you home. That's right, Mrs. Morlin. I'm sorry for what's happened. And I want to apologize for any inconvenience or disturbance I caused you. But you understand, I... I don't... understand. It's quite all right. May I go now? Certainly. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Bye. Bye, Jerry. Bye, Mr. Conroy. Well, that's that. You can tell Marion Gordon to go home now. Tell her. I'll take her. No, you won't. You stay right here. Oh, look, Jerry, I'm tired. This has been a tough case. I want to forget it. Forget it. It's just getting interesting. Pretty slow. Hey, did you hear the latest news? Did you see what happened? What? Just what I said would happen. They released Mrs. Morland. I can't see why they arrested her in the first place. A nice looking doll like that, why she wouldn't murder nobody. I don't care what they had on her. Take a look at her and see if it's not the type. Think so? This is my flop. Your what? My flop, my shelter, my home. While I don't wish to appear inhospitable, blow. Ah, never mind, wait. You need the rest, and I need to remember the brotherhood of man. He's not a bad guy. As long as you're peaceable, he won't bother you. And nevertheless, uh, let's not tempt his mood. Such stuff as dreams are made of.
Will you share a dream? Uh, don't be afraid. There are no bad dreams here. No nightmares of secret crimes, haunting guilt and pursuing justice. Yeah. Nothing but sweet dreams guaranteed of universal brotherhood and peace, of love and forgetfulness. Forgetfulness of the evil hearts of men and ourselves. I'll go ahead and drink before I die of thirst. Not woman, wine, and song remains a fool his whole life long. All true. All but that reference to woman. It was a wiser man who said, Infamy, thy name is woman. I know. Do we need a better example? There's a woman who was released after a charge of murdering her husband. Why? Because she was innocent? No. Because she's a woman. Young, attractive. He, poor soul, is... A week ago, he, he was just an ordinary man. Like... Like me. He, he was breathing. He was alive. He was enjoying life. He was drinking. Now look, Marion, let's not go over that again. It's been very nice, but it's over. Over? Oh, no, it isn't. It's not going to be that easy. There's still a few things I can tell McMullen. Just because they've got read and released Mrs. Moreland doesn't mean that... I'm sorry, but I prefer not to discuss it over the phone. Now, suppose we postpone it until... We'll postpone nothing. If you won't talk over the phone, you can come over here. Then I'm coming to your place right now. Now, wait a minute. At your house at Topanga. I came up here on a hunch. And I was right. What's it about? John! 
What about John? I can't tell you over the phone, but can you come up here right away? No. Don't bring anyone. All right, Jim, I'll be right there. Surely you didn't think I was dead. Not you, of all people. Then who was in the... Do you remember Willis? He used to do odd jobs for us when he was sober. I hated to do it, but... When Bailey left me in the lurch, someone had to play the part of John Morland's corpse. So good of Jim to bring you out here. Of course, I had to persuade him. But then... Well, I couldn't let him go and spoil my beautiful plan. You know, I had hoped to have the law do this for me, Catherine. But since it won't... There won't be any question of identification this time. I was listening in the hallway and I heard a bang. So then I crashed down the door and there was Red Bailey. He whirled on me with a gun in his hand, but I was too fast for him. I hit him with a right to the jaw and I left to the jaw and down he went. Where was Daddy? Well, well, well he, he was in the other room with Mr. O'Neill. What about that poison? Well, Morland planted that himself to build up a perfect case against Mrs. Morland. The trouble was, it was too perfect. And that's what made me suspicious. And then when I read the diary, I was positive he was still alive. Now all I had to do was figure out my next move. Is that why Daddy let her go on Havis' corpses? Well, 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 yes. And then when Dorothy phoned about Mrs. Morland going to their weekend house, I knew it was the payoff. We got the district attorney and rushed up there. Mrs. Morland's car was already in the driveway. We shrieked to a stop. Then a shot rang out. And another, and another. Without a moment's hesitation, I dashed inside I and I... get it! Whoa! Oh, 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 oh